Elliptical business activity HR95, the intention is to, for you to create a design table slash Excel spreadsheet out of the information that's given here. The shape is show, shown to you. The corresponding uh, dimension names are up on the figure. And the table that you're going to give me must be like that. Okay. Uh, keep in mind that uh, wherever you put this part file, you save it, wherever you save it, the Excel spreadsheet should also be in the same place. And when you up your, upload your result for uh, um, the exam, then you make sure that both the part and the Excel spreadsheet is submitted or uploaded. You just give you give me the part even though you have done the design table in it you give me the, the the part only with no excel spreadsheet coming with it then uh, i won't be able to assess that i won't be able to to mark it basically all right now uh, please notice that um, i've said said that the units in this table are inches to make my job easier i'm going to set my units in katia to be inches okay and then use the first row of this table as a guide for me to create my nominal part okay so notice that the approach that i'm taking is i make the part out of that i get the excel spreadsheet and then add the stuff below that one row of the spreadsheet that i'm creating okay i'll populate it so that at the end the excel that you create is going to be like that okay so let's go ahead and do that uh on this horizontal plane i will sketch all right i'll sketch something that resembles that shape we can clean it up of course based on uh, uh based on uh constraints and things like this but right now i'll just draw something that kind of resembles that there now let's clean it up for example left line control right line control the middle axis you make it symmetric right there in this uh, uh, toolbar now that point for example the same thing you have to do with these the alternative is to select the center and put it on that line okay so this point, the center of that circle, control that axis, we will make it coincident. And that forces these to be these two to be symmetric. You can always check this to see whether it's behaving the way it's supposed to. Oops, we can see that there's a problem here, control Z. Why don't we make uh, uh, this thing vertical? Select this, right click vertical from here or you can go to the same toolbar or dialog box and say vertical that's entirely up to you and now when i grab this corner point you can see that it does what it's supposed to all right good let's dimension it according to this specification all right so let's do that uh dimension definitely this is going to be radius this is going to be later on your uh, variable. Let me see, based on the table, this is going to be later your variable x. This is going to be y later on. And that is going to be the t. Okay? Now, exit and pad it. Okay? And what I'm going to do is uh, I will rename these dimensions represent whatever you see in this diagram okay so because remember at the end of the day the table must have in its first row those names all right oh i forgot to do that by the way the uh the uh, unit conversion so let's go to tools options and under parameters and measure i'm going to change the units of this to be inches and the reason I suggest that, if you go back to that, if you go back to that sketch, 
My suggestion is use the first row as nominal values. You don't have to, but that's a wise thing to do. So this is going to be first row. Uh, this is going to be your 10. Your Y is going to be, uh, say, for my table 5. The, the R is 1. And the T is also 1. I want to repeat once again that this is not a requirement. However, it is wise and you minimize the amount of hassle and possible confusion if you use one of these rows as the nominal values to make the part. Exit, and then parent, or use that same nominal value, which happens to be also a Z, Z equal to 3 oh. So this particular diagram corresponds to the first row of that thing. Now, uh, well, let's go ahead and uh, oh, look. I've created a design table. Yes. Now notice that the activity does not ask you to uh, create the uh, to create the serial numbers, okay? But you should be able to do that, all right? Uh, so I'm not going to do that because the activity by itself it says if I blocked off that serial number, but you should be able to do it with serial number. In the next activity that I will do later on, uh, I will actually use the serial number. That will be activity. Uh, TR68, I will have serial number and material there, but this is a simplified version. That's the first uh, first attempt. Okay, now uh, pretty much uh, click on f of x, move this thing on the side, click on the part, and start renaming these things. So select this, that thing I'm going to call big X, this I'm going to call big Y. Uh, let's see now, there is there is this thing here, which is going to be your uh, T. I'm going to call this thing T, I'm pretty sure, is that, the, oh, I'm sorry, that is, cancel that. Let me, let me, yes, uh, let me, let me say, let me say okay, but uh, let's go ahead, back to that F of X, see what I've done so far. So, where is my part? Oh, it's hidden. Okay, so let's see now, what did I do? So far, what have I, what have I renamed? Uh, I have renamed X and Y. I haven't done anything else, so let's go ahead and do the rest. So this is under all, all right? Now, that fellow is your R, big R. Uh, see now, that guy is big T. This is the padded height, and I'm going to call the same thing Z, right? Yeah, Z. Okay. So if you want to make sure that everything is taken care of, go there, say rename parameters, and this is the stuff that you rename. Okay, so we say fine, no problem. Go to uh, design table. Now what we're doing is we're creating a design table with current values of parameter values. Now I want to remind you that we didn't actually create parameters, but when Katia makes a model, it creates these parameters which are called intrinsic parameters. Those ugly names, long names, they're parameters, but they're called intrinsic parameters. They're not user parameters that I define, okay? And then we say, okay. Oops, cancel. This second row is wrong now. Say, okay. Good. It says, all right, what do you want to go in the Excel spreadsheet? Well, I mean, I renamed a bunch of things. Why don't I say rename? Show me the rename stuff. The first row, I want it to be X. Second row, I want it to be Y. Uh, sorry, first column, I want it to be X. Second column, I want it to be Y. Third column, third column based on the table that I give you, uh, is uh, Z. Next one is R. And finally, T. 
So this is the stuff I want to go into my Excel spreadsheet. So I say, okay. All right, it says, where do you want to put it? Well, I already have uh, saved my part in a folder called activity week seven, etc. And I'm going to put my design table there too, but I'm going to call it design table for activity. Uh, what was that? H, uh, HR95. Because I'm going to do another problem. I'll put in the same, uh, same folder. I don't want them to get mixed up. Give it time. Good. It created it. This is the first row, as you can see. Now, uh, if I say apply, actually, this red will go away, which is fine. But then I want to edit the table. I want to populate the rest of the table. So over here, the next row is going to be five and five and two and one and 0 0.5. Remember, if you put ugly numbers here, that might make uh, the uh, sketch self-intersecting and all kinds of problems. So you can just randomly go ahead and do things. These should lead to a sketch that eventually can be patterned. And I've tried these, these work. But sometimes I make a mistake too. I put a, inadvertently a number there that uh, causes a problem. Uh, 0 0.5 and uh, 0 0.5. That's the third row. And two. Okay. And then save. And you have to close it. You have to close the Excel spreadsheet, otherwise, you won't work. Wait until the synchronization message, message comes. No, no, no errors here. So if you go to the second row, apply. Third row, apply. Uh, 